for this video, what we have is a coin is flipped three times. We're going to construct a tree diagram and list the sample space. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip the coin three times and we're going to look at all of our possible outcomes. So on the first flip, what we can do is we can either get heads or tails. Those are the only two possibilities that we can get when we flip our coin. What we get on the first one doesn't have anything to do with what we get on the second one. So when I flip it a second time, I can still get heads or tails. So I either got heads on the first one, and if I got heads on the first one, then I can either get heads or I can get tails on the second flip. Same thing if I started with tails, I can either get heads or I can get tails on the second flip. For the third flip, what we have is again, it doesn't matter what we got on the first um, two trials. The coin doesn't have a memory, so it doesn't matter what you got. So I could get heads, heads, and then I could get heads again, or I could get heads, heads, and then tails. Okay, for this one, I could still get heads or tails. For this one, I can get heads or tails and I can get heads or tails here. So for every single flip, it doesn't matter what I got on the first two, I can get heads or tails for the next one. So if we were to use the fundamental counting principle to help us back up to see what our sample space is, remember the fundamental counting principle says that no matter how many times you do something, you can multiply them together to see what your total sample space should contain. So I had two outcomes for the first one times two times two. And you can see that we ended up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different combinations of flipping our coin. Okay. Um, so our sample space We can go through and write out all of our possibilities that we could have. We could have heads on the first with heads on the second and heads on the third. We could have heads on the first with heads on the second and tails on the third. We can have heads, tails, heads, or we can have heads, tails, tails. So that gives us all of the different um, orders that we can get with having a heads on the first coin. To have tails on the first coin, then we could get heads on the second and heads on the third. We could get tails with heads with tails. We can get tails with tails on the second and heads on the third, or we can get all three of them tails. So if you notice, this backs up the fundamental counting principle, we have eight different um, arrangements of the order of our coins. So now what we can do is we can use the sample space to help us determine probabilities. So the first one that we're going to look at is exactly one tail. So we're looking for the probability of one tail. So what we want to do is go through and see where we have exactly one. So this one doesn't have any. This one has exactly one. This one has exactly one. This one has two, so it doesn't count. This one has exactly one. And then notice we have two, two, and three. So there's only three of them out of eight total that give me exactly one tail. So the probability of getting exactly one tail when you flip a coin three times is three out of eight. For the next one, at least two heads. At least two means that the smallest that it can be is two, so that means it's greater than or equal to two. Okay, and I should probably put the letter that we're looking for. So for this one, we're looking for greater than or equal to two. That's what at least means. So if we go through, we can see that this one is greater than or equal to because it has three. This one is greater than or equal to because it has two. So this one has two, this one has two, and the rest just have one. So we can see that four out of eight or one half of our combinations have at least two heads. Okay, moving along to the next one, three tails. Three tails only happens once. So the probability of three tails 
is 1 out of 8 because the only time it happens is if I get all three tails. And then the last one is at most 2. So you can do this one two ways. With this one, at most 2 means the probability of less than or equal to 2 tails. Okay, so if we go through this, what we're looking for is at most two, which means less than three, is basically another way of saying this. So we can see that only one time does it have more than two. Um, so we could just do the complement rule and do one minus one eighth to get it, or we could go through and count all of the ones that have at most two tails. So this one doesn't have any, which would count. This one has one, this one has one, this one has two, one, two, and one. So the other way that we could have done it is just count how many um, have less than or equal to two tails, and that would be seven out of eight. So there are two ways to come up with the last answer. So with this, just to recap, a tree diagram is useful for a small sample space. It is not helpful if you have, like if I were flipping a coin 20 times, you would not want to do a tree diagram. Um, but if you have a small sample space, it helps you to see um, what is exactly is happening, and then it can help you find probabilities. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know.